This review has been a long time coming. I've been holding off reviewing the Mantis until I felt like I'd used it long enough and put it through enough of a stress test to give an in-depth review. Almost every video on this channel has featured the Mantis, so I've definitely put this scooter through its paces. I've decided to break this review up into three categories. First, the construction and design of the scooter. Next, how it performs. And last, other thoughts I have about the scooter. This review is going to be specifically of the base model Mantis, but the majority of the things I cover in this review apply to the Pro model as well. While it doesn't make much of a difference for this review, I will clarify that I live in the USA and purchased the Mantis through the distributor Fluid Freeride. I haven't interacted much with the company other than to order the scooter, so I don't have much to say about the distributor. I will say that the scooter arrived at my door in two days, which was actually insane, so props to them. The scooter costed me about 1600 US dollars, which is the typical price range that you will find the scooter at. Before I dive into the details of construction and performance, let me talk about first impressions of the scooter when you see it in person. The first thing you notice about a scooter before you ride is how it looks, and for me, this all black Mantis is number one in this category. I genuinely don't think that there's a scooter that looks sleeker and cooler than this on the market. I love the minimalist design without bright colors, weird curves, or external RGB lighting that so many other expensive scooters insist on including. I love having a scooter that always surprises you with its acceleration and speed without looking like an alien spaceship. If you like the crazier designs of scooters, that's great, but this scooter probably isn't for you. The frame of the Mantis is one-pieced forged 6000 grade aluminum and seems to be the perfect balance between rigidity and weight. I want to draw attention to some of the specific design choices I really like on the Mantis, starting with the stem. The Mantis stays with the minimalist, sleek design by keeping the stem a single tube with no abnormal bends or twists or added design elements. The stem clamp is also very simple and straightforward using a double quick release system that is very easy to use and gets the clamp very tight and stable. To completely lock the stem into place with this, just alternate tightening each quick release clamp and closing it to pull the metal closer together for the other quick release clamp. Keep going like this till you can barely get both closed at the same time and then you know you're locked and ready to go. Note that even fully tightened, the stem has some give to it, which as far as I understand is an intentional design choice to help prevent the stem from snapping like it did in previous models of the Mantis. It doesn't feel loose, it just has a bit of give to it. I barely notice it, but I know that some people feel like their stem is always loose because of it. The stem has given me no issues with stability and I've never felt like it has been at risk of snapping. Another design element I really like in the Mantis is the dedicated back foot rest. It is a super solid piece of metal built into the main body of the scooter. I use it all the time and can't imagine not having it. It also helps aesthetically to balance the design of the scooter and give that Mantis its perched elegance. I love that the mud guards are removable because the back one can get really noisy and I think that the scooter looks better without the rear mud guard. Just remove a couple of screws at the base and it comes right off. I really don't need it because I never ride in the rain or in other scenarios where I feel like it would be needed. The deck size seems to be just right, long enough to comfortably fit both my feet in the position I want to ride, but not too wide where it starts to look fat. Overall, the look and design of this scooter frame is one of its strongest features. My biggest issue with the design of the Mantis is the strange design that they chose for mounting the handlebars. This handlebar clamp makes replacing the handlebars really difficult as you are forced into finding 22.2 millimeter handlebars to fit into the clamp without gaps. 22.2 millimeter handlebars are really uncommon now and it's difficult to find them in wider sizes. This normally wouldn't be an issue because you could buy a bicycle stem that fit the handlebars you want, but the extra large stem base on the Mantis makes replacing the clamp impossible. Despite this, I'm not particularly upset about it as the bars that come with the scooter are just fine. I was also somewhat disappointed in the stock handlebar grips. They are foam and feel a little cheap. They also rotate around the handlebars quite easily. I replaced these a while ago and probably would have ended up replacing them with my favorite grips anyway, even if the stock ones had been decent, so I really don't hold this against the scooter. The place where this scooter really starts to fall short is in the added components. I'm talking about all the things besides the frame of the scooter. I don't know if Cabo manufactures the other components on this scooter, but they're quite disappointing. Let's start with the brakes. 
If a $1,600 scooter is running brake levers that I can find on Amazon for $7 a set, then I know I'm in trouble. These calipers aren't doing the scooter any favors either. I've never heard of this brand of brakes and could only find them on Chinese websites. They are cheap to buy and the performance reflects that. It is nearly impossible to fully engage the brakes with one finger even when turned to a higher sensitivity and when the brakes are set up that way they rub and make noises. I recently took off the back wheel of the scooter to change a punctured inner tube and also to look at how the brake rotor would come off in order to be replaced. To my amazement I found that the brake rotor could not be taken off the scooter without fully disconnecting the hub motor wires from the inside of the battery compartment. They give you mediocre brakes and make it quite difficult to replace them. The other thing I noticed is that the back hub is off center and wobbles at high speeds. I don't know if this is something that I did or if it just came like that, but part of the issues with the back brakes is because the whole hub is bent. I'll be looking into doing a hub replacement in the future and I'll do a full brake replacement at the same time. I'm reluctant to do this right now because I make all my content with my Mantis and I don't own another scooter that has the speed to create the exciting content I want to make. The controller that comes with the base model of the Mantis is quite common, so my gripes with it aren't really the fault of Cabo, but I will talk about them anyway. From the very first time I took the scooter out, the buttons on the controller would stick down and make it impossible to turn the scooter off. The buttons did eventually loosen up, and the issue hasn't happened in a while, but it was still annoying while it lasted. Also, the controller reads a much higher speed than you're actually going. I've compared the displayed speeds to a GPS speedometer and it's not close enough really to rely on, but it's not a huge deal as long as you have a ballpark estimate of your speed, which it does give you. I've taken the scooter a number of places on road trips and had no issues getting the 65 pound scooter inside the car by myself. The scooter folds down small enough to fit in the trunk of a car without the annoying addition of folding handlebars. I like rigid handlebars that will not wiggle or come loose the way folding handlebars can sometimes do. This scooter is fast and insanely fun to ride. The base model sports dual 1000 watt motors giving the scooter impressive acceleration and a top speed that outperformed the listed specs. I hit a top speed of 46 miles an hour while riding up Red Rock Canyon in Las Vegas. The Mantis feels light and agile while having enough weight to soak up bumps and potholes. It really feels like a perched praying Mantis while riding. It seems to float along when riding in typical conditions. The suspension is tuned great for riding on normal streets, but the Mantis feels much less agile and fast when you take it off-road. I know that the Mantis is not an off-road scooter. I even did a video about it but I was still quite disappointed in how squishy the suspension feels off-road and the road tires perform very poorly, which honestly is unsurprising. Off-road performance is not something I hold against the Mantis, I just wanted to give you guys the most complete performance review. Braking is mediocre but sufficient to stop you quickly and keep you safe, especially if you are using both brakes all the time. The regenerative braking helps some, so having super high quality brakes is not as important, but I feel that brakes on the base model of the Mantis should be something that you look into upgrading eventually. I managed to get about 20 miles on a charge if I'm lucky, but I push the scooter as fast and as hard as it can go all the time. I hardly ever change it out of dual motor turbo mode with the controller set to speed setting 3. So 20 miles really is the bare minimum distance that this base model scooter will go. I did have the scooter randomly run out of battery on me after about 14 miles one time, but I was going mostly uphill during that time, so I blame that primarily. Overall the scooter does the distance I need it to, but I will eventually look for something with better range. I want to talk about some of the things I brought up in my 250 mile update video on the Mantis. The first is about the waterproofing precautions I took. I plugged both open ports in the deck with the moldable glue. One of the things I forgot to consider was that when the suspension compresses on the back wheel, the brake cable moves and the glue breaks loose and essentially negates the waterproofing effect of the glue. The glue has stayed mostly intact at the front port, which is where the water seems to be most likely to get in, so overall I'm glad I did it. I haven't ridden any sort of rain or water except for the occasional puddle or sprinkler runoff, and I haven't had any water damage. I also mentioned in the 250 mile update video that the kickstand had fallen off. 
it seems that the hole drilled for the kickstand screws were in fact drilled too large, which was causing the screws to fall out, and the holes were not large enough to fit the next size up of screw. So I literally doused the screws and kickstand plate in super glue and smacked it back on there. It's held up great over the past few weeks. It's just annoying that I have to MacGyver something so simple onto the scooter. This scooter is always gonna hold a special place in my heart because it was the scooter that made me fall in love with riding electric scooters. This is a scooter that gave me my start here on YouTube and has been overall an amazing scooter. I 100% recommend this scooter and will keep this one as long as I can and then probably buy another one when this one dies. Thanks for watching this review. Be sure to drop a like if it was useful or you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more scooter content and keep on riding or something like that. I don't, I really need to pick a catchphrase or something for my outro.